Welcome to the Sunday edition of Purchase the Profits, where I'll be talking about the lessons that I've learned this week and speaking with our amazing guests here on the show. And if you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss our daily interviews with successful real estate investors. So to kick off this week, we had John Cohen on the show on Monday, and John has a billion dollar goal. He wants to run a billion dollar real estate business. And we spend a good time, Good amount of time talking about how he's sourcing and acquiring and underwriting deals right now in the current market cycle here at the start of 2019. Uh, the market's pretty compressed. The really good deals are hard to come by. It takes a lot of digging, a lot of networking. And he talked about how he backs into deals now, um, meaning that first he figures out how much he wants to profit and then he works the numbers backwards to see if that deal fits uh, his profit goal. Uh, most people end up, they'll see a deal and then they'll try and figure out how to make that deal work and see how much profit's left over at the end. I really like that approach and that's something I've, I've, uh, I've been doing in my own, my own underwriting and deal sourcing. Uh, you always have to value your time and your efforts and your money that you're putting into the deal. So you, you really should have that first at the forefront uh, when you are sourcing and underwriting and running the numbers on any potential acquisition. So I, I really liked how he explained that. So he figures out how much profit he wants, works backwards, then figures out if that deal is worth uh, you know, uh, offering on and acquiring. So re really good stuff from John Cohen. Definitely watch that. He actually started as a real estate broker and then transitioned into syndication. So a really good story with John. Then we had John Kasman. So we had two Johns in a row. Uh, so John started, this John uh, started off with an eight unit deal. Um, he started small because he wanted to establish a track record. So then he could go to investors and say, hey, listen, this is what I've done. These are the results I've got. Um, you know, will you invest with me? based on the, the, these results. Um, I think that's a really smart way to do it because there's lots of people that get involved in real estate. I see it all the time in the forums on bigger pockets where, hey, I'm brand new to real estate, but nobody's investing their money with me. What's, what am I doing wrong? Well, the answer is if somebody just walked up to you off the street and say, hey, listen, I'm starting this. I have no experience in it. I have nothing to show for it. Will you give me $300,000? Well, the answer is going to be no. Um, so with John, he started off small, eight unit property. That was, a, a, that was what he could bite off at the time. Did really well, got some uh, good returns on that deal. And then he's able to leverage that on the next deal and then bring in maybe uh, a one or two money partners and grow it that way. Um, his first big deal, it was a 192 unit uh, deal and he acquired that with a partner. So he was able to leverage his partner's experience, his partner's credibility, plus his own track record from his uh, smaller deals in order to participate in that large deal, almost 200 units. Um, so he's got the scale, he's got the full-time management, all the benefits that go into syndicating a larger deal. And, and that was his way of getting in to the larger uh, multifamily syndication business. So really smart strategy there uh, with John. And now he's using his profits to not only spend more time with his family, but he's got some other nonprofit, uh, you know, volunteering initiatives that are really important to him. And uh, plus he runs a really good uh, podcast as well. So check out John Kasman. And then we had Aditya Soma. And by the time I interviewed him, he had just quit his job. Uh, here's a guy, he came, he's an immigrant to Canada, settled in Windsor, got a job, and then he started investing in real estate. And uh, he's worked really hard over the past couple of years and has uh, been able to exit that workforce. And now he focuses on real estate full time. Um, he's focused primarily on single family properties, so duplex conversions. And now he's looking at some larger deals, uh, but he built most of his portfolio in those uh, in that smaller uh, size range. Uh, he always targets a value add component, so mostly uh, with renovation. So he'll look at for a dated property, a uh, property with some issues. Then he'll, he'll go in and fix those problems, and then uh, do a refi or or remortgage the property, pull those profits out, and move on to the next one. Um, he mentioned something that I found really interesting. So he works primarily with one 
money partner. So he approached this money partner once he had done a couple of deals and said, hey, listen, this is what I'm doing. How about you invest with me in a small project? Let's start really small. He didn't go off asking for you know half a million dollars right off the bat. Started small, I think it was about $100,000, $150,000. Hey, let's start with this. And then we'll start, uh, and then we'll grow as as it snowballs. And now you know that they've done a lot uh, bigger projects uh, with that money partner, and uh, that money partner has gotten a lot of good returns. So really good chat with Aditya, um, and uh, re really enthusiastic guy, and he actually runs his own YouTube channel as well. So check that out. Then I had Mark and Ann Lackey on. Mark and Ann, so they were on a trip. And they had a real estate business. They had lots of units and their employee quit while they were away and uh, they didn't really take vacation. So this was their first one in a while. And then everything got ruined because the employee quit. So they, they, thought the, they thought to themselves, hey, what do I have to do to solve this problem so it doesn't happen um, ever again? And then they discovered virtual assistants, so VAs. And the really important thing that they mention is it's, it's very crucial uh, to have your systems and processes in place so the virtual assistant knows what they have to follow. So if somebody calls in about a property, you know, you have to ask them this, 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 this is the process you follow, this is how you follow up. Uh, same thing with somebody calling up who wants to sell their property to them. These are the, this is information we need, this is how you follow up with them, this is the expectation. So they've built out those systems, um, over their career in real estate investing and now they've got it uh, honed down. They travel all over the place. When I talked with them, they were about to leave on another trip. They disappear, uh, you know, sometimes a couple times a month. So re really fun couple to talk to. And now they've, they've gone into a virtual assistant business. So they've, they hold their real estate, but now they're actually helping other people uh, hire and uh, train and put a, and how to integrate a virtual assistant into their business. Uh, so really good interview, really interesting. They do offer a free book to download. Uh, you can check out that link. Um, once you watch that uh, interview. So really suggest that one, uh, especially for anybody looking to scale their business and bring on staff members. Then we had Logan Freeman. Uh, Logan, uh, ex-NFL guy, he signed his uh, pro contract. Um, and then he got into real estate. Uh, I, I mentioned to him that it's, it's interesting because I, we have lots of sports guys on the show and they always seem to do really well. So it must be something with the competitive nature and the team building and the, uh, and the perseverance factor in, in sports, especially professional sports. So Logan talked about how he's always looking to solve problems. Uh, he has a saying where he, he, all, he says, the riches are in the niches. So he's always on, on the lookout for, oh, is there, problem, is there a problem with some issues that will turn most people off and how can I solve those because he's a good problem solver. So he brought us uh, a deal uh, where it was a commercial with uh, two, uh, two short-term rentals above and uh, it turned off a lot of people. It was a little more complex uh, than most people would rather want to uh, take down. But then you saw the location, the hospital was close by, and there's lots of people coming in and out of the hospital visiting patients, and they're looking for that short-term rental. So he took over the property, he acquired it, and then he brought in a third-party management company who is an expert in those short-term rentals because he doesn't want to touch that. He's better off paying somebody who's an expert in that field. And uh, he, he's doing really well with that property. So it was really interesting to, to hear him explain his thinking, his process on that, and how you put it all together to come out uh, with a, a successful deal. So highly suggest that interview with Logan Freeman. As always, I really appreciate hearing the comments uh, that, that you guys send me. And uh, I really appreciate your support. So hit the subscribe button, share your favorite interview, and uh, let me know what you think. And until next time, I wish you well on your journey from purchase to profits.